Principle three is about recognising that all decisions about collaborating and restructuring involve giving up some of your organisation's autonomy and control. Even the simplest collaboration, for example a joint fundraising event, involves trading off your autonomy or independence for an increased return. There may be huge advantages in working with another organisation to raise funds, but it's unlikely the other organisation is going to do everything you want your way. Like all relationships, you'll have to share, and this means that sometimes you give up the control and decision making to the other organisation. Even just putting your logos on the same promotional material has a cost in terms of the potential risk to your reputation should something bad happen to tarnish the reputation of the other organisation. There are plenty of examples of not-for-profits being sponsored by commercial organisations that later had major PR problems and instead of enhancing the not-for-profits reputation created embarrassment. It's always good practice to consider every collaboration or restructuring in comparison to going it alone. Quite often the benefits of a collaboration do not outweigh the costs that come with the loss of control. It is useful to think of collaborations and restructuring on a spectrum, with the simplest ad hoc collaborations at the start of the spectrum and the most complex collaborations and then mergers at the other end. The simplest collaborations involve the least impact on your organisation. You might have to share decision making, costs and risks around a one-off event, but this is over quickly and you soon return to being independent organisations with no ongoing responsibilities. At the other end, if your organisation is merged or subsumed into another, then it loses all of its autonomy. This loss of autonomy can be one of the main reasons organisations delay merging longer than they should. It's also one of the issues that causes collaborations or mergers to become unstuck. When participants don't fully consider the impact of this loss of autonomy or independence in advance, there is a big risk that they will change their mind about the collaboration or merger partway through. With a collaboration, this may not be a big problem. If you haven't invested a great deal of resources into it, it won't matter. But if you've been in business for 10 or more years, like me, you've probably got files sitting at the back of your cupboard or hard drive of projects that you started and didn't finish. While we learn from each one of these, there is a cost involved when we don't proceed. For mergers, the issue of the loss of autonomy can be the main reason discussions are stopped or stalled. The negotiations about who will be in control of the merged organisation and the emotional factors involved in that loss of independence are significant and need to be managed carefully. We will discuss these later in the course. Loss of autonomy is not inherently bad and is exactly the right thing to do if it achieves your best interest of your beneficiaries. But for many people and organisations, this loss of autonomy is not easy.